Hey everybody, in this lesson we will be learning about some important process parameters in a hydrocracking unit and how they impact process safety. Before we get started on the HAZOP, let's walk through the P&IDs and get some process parameters. This will give us a better understanding of how the system works. The first thing we need to understand is the feed coming into the system. Let's talk about the feed oil. The feed oil comes from the inlet of the unit and enters the feed search drum. The important parameters to understand on this line include the temperature and pressure, the flow rate and the composition, including any impurities which could be in the feed. The flow rate coming into the system can be controlled with a flow control valve. This system is designed for 10,000 barrels per day. The feed operates at a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit and a pressure of 450 kPaG or 65 PSIG. What kind of impurities could there be in the feed? One concern is sulfur or nitrogen in the feed. Hydro-treating is required to remove sulfur or nitrogen. Depending on the catalyst used in the reactor, pre-treating to remove these impurities may be required to prevent poisoning the catalyst. From the surge drum, the feed gets pumped out and combined with the makeup hydrogen. I'll get the pump curve. We need to understand the maximum discharge pressure of the pump. Yes, and we will also need to know the maximum operating temperature and pressure of the piping. If the pump is a credible source of overpressure, we need to understand the set point and action of any high pressure shutdowns, or if there is a pressure safety valve. We will need to understand this for any potential pressure sources in the system, including all pumps or compressors. We also need to know the amount of liquid in the incoming stream and the liquid dropout rate in the knockout drum. If we get liquids into the compressor, this could destroy it. The hydrogen comes from the battery limit and is fed to the compressor. We already talked about compressors being a pressure source in the system. Flow rate is also important, since hydrogen is required for the hydrocracking reaction. Yes, that would be very expensive, and it could also be a health and safety risk if there was a loss of containment. Where does the product go after the feed oil and makeup hydrogen are combined? It looks like the feed goes through a heat exchanger. What is the design pressure of the shell and tube sides of this exchanger? The shell side is designed to 150 PSIG or 1034 kPaG, and the tube side is designed to 200 PSIG or 1379 kPaG. Why does the design pressure matter? We aren't adding any pressure sources. If there is a tube leak or rupture in the exchanger, we need to understand the design pressure on both sides of the exchanger. This event could result in a contamination issue, or it could be much more serious depending on the design of the exchanger. What is the temperature going into and out of the exchanger? Let me log into our system and check. I can take a look at what the temperature transmitters are reading right now. It looks like it is 50 degrees Celsius, or 122 degrees Fahrenheit coming in and 90 degrees Celsius or 194 degrees Fahrenheit coming out. Great. We will need to know this for each of the exchangers in the system. We will also need to know the temperature going into and out of the charge heater. I can go out to the field and check some of the valves. Let's take a quick break while we track down some of the information we need. When we come back, we can talk about the reactor. Do you think we have all the information and process parameters we need for the discussion about the reactors this afternoon? Well, let's see. For the HAZOP, I think one of the main pieces of information we are going to need is the temperature in the reactor. We should gather information about the temperature profile across the reactor and at each of the inlets for the quench gas. We will also need to know the pressure rating in metallurgy. Great! Uh, do you think you could work together to get this information before the HAZOP this afternoon? Having this information ahead of time would really speed things up. Absolutely. I'll start on that as soon as I finish my sandwich. I will also get information on the composition of the stream coming in and out of the reactor. We need to understand how much gas and liquid we have, as well as the amount of hydrogen sulfide. This is a toxic gas, so I think knowing the concentration will be important for the HAZOP. As you can see, understanding the process parameters in the system is very important for the HAZOP. 
One important thing to watch out for is sources of pressure like pumps or compressors. The team also needs to understand the locations of spec brakes. The way the control system works, including the action and set point of any shutdowns, should also be reviewed. One thing that is easy to miss in a HAZOP is the interface with other systems. For example, there may be a potential source of reverse flow from downstream if the unit shuts down. It is important to understand parameters such as temperature, pressure, composition, and flow rate on the inlet and outlet of the system, not only within the unit itself. Once all this information is available, the team can start focusing on the hazards associated with the process and use one of the process hazard analysis methodologies, such as a HAZOP or a LOPA, to ensure there are adequate safeguards. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please check out HAZOP 360, our web based HAZOP software. Stop wasting your time setting up spreadsheets. With the HAZOP 360 web application, you can be running your HAZOP in minutes. Sign up for your one week free trial today.